As a paleontologist, an expert on fossils, of course I have to learn a great deal about evolution. But in the broad scheme of things, the received wisdom is that evolution is effectively a set of glorious accidents. It could have gone there, it could have gone there. Whereas what's also familiar to biologists, but I think relatively underappreciated until quite recently, is something you would call convergent evolution. Now by that, what we're thinking about is the way in which a very similar, if you like, solution has been arrived at because it's extremely effective. But it's been arrived at, for all intents and purposes, independently. Amongst the most famous examples is that if you look at the eye of ourselves as a mammal and then look at the eye, for instance, of the squid or the octopus, for all intents and purposes they are identical. In detail, there are significant differences, and the significant differences are only those which say each one had a separate evolutionary history. But in other respects, they work in exactly the same way. And who's surprised? Because the camera-like arrangement, which defines the eye of ourselves as vertebrates and squid and octopus as a group of mollusks, is a very good solution. But we know that the common ancestor and there was a common ancestor, of course, was something like a worm. It lived in the Cambrian about 500 million years ago. It almost certainly could detect light, but it didn't have anything like the camera eye. So there are particular historical trajectories which tend to end up at very much the same destination. Evolution is not completely open-ended.